Hi, I'm Nusheen. I am a PhD student here in RMIT University. I am working on social and cultural drivers of private landholders who participated in a voluntary carbon planting. And I have been interested in knowing why they voluntarily sacrificed part of their land for plantation and why they cared for biodiversity and participating in such program. These landholders were participating through Greenfleet who is my industry partner. Greenfleet plants trees across Australia, both in public and private land, to offset greenhouse gas emissions. So a critical part of the work we do is connecting to landholders who um, typically give us land and covenant that land that is protected for an, up to 100 years. So that's a very big step for landholders and we do that with both private and public landholders. Nushin's role has been to look at uh, all of the elements that go into landholders um, becoming part of such a system um, and to start to understand that on a broader framework. Working with them really helped me because I recruited my participants through Greenfleet. So it was much easier me going door by door in the you know, farms across Victoria and I had this opportunity for me, you know, that they introduced me. They sent a letter out to the landholders and they said that they support this study and it's important for them to find out, you know, about their landholders more. So I guess the core insight for us is that we obviously connect climate change to biodiversity. Her insights have been very much that landholders, are very, although they're, they're very aware of the climate change component, they see the biodiversity. That's what they experience in front of them. For landholders, it's very important for us to use the biodiversity language that makes sense to them because that's what they're experiencing. So even though we might feel the climate change uh, language is um, compelling, it's not as compelling for them because their experience is what they see in front of them, which is biodiverse forests. From my own personal perspective, I think it's important that as researchers we do both things. We do something practical and also, you know, build the body of science. So if we go either way and do not keep the balance fine, I think it's something is missing there. Now, of course, we're not an academic research organisation, but we, we're very keen to have researchers assist us to not only provide us with, as with Nushin, a sort of insight into our work, but also to give us a strong evidence base. And you know, that's the sort of work that really only you could do through universities. Um, and so that's an exciting kind of cooperation that we're keen to explore in lots of other ways. I think it's a massive experience. It's not within, <laughs> you know, you cannot describe it within a couple of sentences. It changes, you know, everything. Because doing a PhD is like above and beyond your comfort zone. It's, it's quite different from what you were doing as a business as usual. So it really helped me to develop a lot of skills, do a lot of networking, going to conferences, meeting new people. And then PhD students also can demonstrate that there is something out there for, the, for their industry partner. It's not just for me to finish a four-year degree and think about finding a work. It's something that I'm, you know, doing this PhD, but I'm giving back to the, you know, to that industry partner, to the community that they are involved with. I think that works very well. Working cross-sectorally across different sectors is never easy in my experience. So the way that the research is presented typically has a different success factor than us. So in the end, we want landholders to sign up. That's what success means to us. That may not be what success looks like to Nushin. For her success, it may be a coherent intellectual framework that makes sense across the range of research she's doing. The art of this is to try and align those success factors as much as possible so that when we cooperate, whether it be with a for-profit company, a large corporate, or with a university research organisation, that as much as possible the success of both organisations is, is aligned so that we don't push in different directions. And I'm sure that's the reason why a lot, this is such a difficult process to go through and why at the moment it seems to be working very well with RMIT.